I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorham, Maine. This is a nice little uh, mahogany drop leaf table. It's not an antique. Uh, it, uh, the word gate leg refers to the fact that you know this is a drop leaf table and the support system uh, resembles a gate, I suppose. It appears to be a solid mahogany. I think even the legs are mahogany. And this table is a mess. I don't know what's happened to it. Uh, it's obviously been left in some weather and greatly abused. It clearly needs to be refinished, but I don't want it to look like a brand new table. I hope to keep it looking old. So what I intend to do is I'm going to wash this down with acetone as best I can. I think all this will come off. It doesn't have much finish on it. I'll sand it lightly. And then I'll treat it with oxalic acid, see if it gets the stains and the black marks out, and then I'll just finish it. The first step, as always, is to uh, remove the leaves. Yeah, I'm going to, uh, I'll remove the base also. That way I'll be able to see if it needs to be re-glued. It'll be easier to work on. All right, I've got uh, acetone and uh, number one steel wool. It's great to uh, watch this mahogany come to life as I scrub off with the acetone. Now, note that I'm, I'm always going with the grain. I'm hoping to really do a minimal amount of sanding on this. So even with the steel wool, I'm going to be careful. I'm going to go with the grain and go very carefully. So I'm going to go over this again with clean acetone. In the meantime, when you're doing something like this, you inevitably are going to get uh, some drips and runs on the bottom, uh, even little drips uh, around the edge here. So you've got to do the bottom too. You can't be having uh, drips, fingerprints, stain, and stuff on the bottom of it. I'm really seeing a lot of color variations on the bottom of the sleeve. Uh, this area here I suspect might be the original color. And uh, I'm just not sure what's going to happen with these big variations on the top. Okay, the base is done. Now I'm going to uh, sand the three sections of the top uh, just with 150 and by hand uh, prior to giving it a treatment of oxalic acid. I've sanded up all three sections now and so I will uh, mix up a little oxalic acid and put it on and see if it helps with the color.
these dry overnight. Uh, now I'll rinse them off. So I've let this all dry for a day or two. The tops look, they look great when they were wet. There's still color variation, but uh, whereas normally you might worry about that or try to do something about it, and I'm not. Uh, we decided in the beginning I was going to clean this off, lightly sand it, exolic it. I'm going to sand it again with some 220, and uh, then we'll put the first coat on. The uh, sandpaper uh, continues to clog up rapidly, uh, probably because I didn't use stripper on this. It must still have a lot of residue of the finish that was on here, but I'm just going <clears> to <throat> deal with it and keep going. For the first coat, I'm going to seal this with shellac. I anticipate uh, that there may be problems with this finish. In other words, I, we know that the top has got some kind of gunk in it that turns up on the sandpaper. Uh, different contaminants can cause problems with uh, surface tension, which makes the finish not flow out smoothly, craters and stuff. So uh, sometimes a coat of shellac might help. The wood looks great. This one board is an incredibly beautiful board. It's too bad the rest of them aren't. There's different things that you could do to try to mitigate the difference between these boards, but uh, it's not my intention to try any of them. This leaf is better. I mean, still, it's all dark down at this end, but uh, it looks good. This is the center section of the table. You know, the leaves are... Uh, made of uh, pretty nice wood, uh, decent width boards. It's odd the top, the center section, is made up of four different boards with really random uh, different types of grain. So I'll let these dry overnight. I'm not going to shellac the base, so I'm going to wait uh, when I put the first coat of tunnel oil varnish on this. I'll do the base at that time. Well, I've let these dry actually for a few days. And so now I'm going to sand them. Uh, with 320 gold. Okay, all three pieces of the top are sanded. So the next step is I'm going to go over these tops with this product uh, called the uh, Wax Wash Remover. Uh, it's just some blend of solvents that will remove oil or other contaminants, hopefully, from the surface. Uh, you could also use uh, paint thinner or even water with uh, ammonia or Dawn detergent in it. What I'll do is I'll, I've taken an industrial paper towel, I'll dampen it with the wax wash remover, go one swipe, turn the pad, another swipe, fold it. In other words, never go back over the same surface. We don't want to spread contaminants around. I want to take them off. So now I'm ready to apply the first coat of varnish. I use this uh, tongue oil varnish. It's very thin. I like it. I like the way it flows out. Okay, the tops are done, and now I can put the uh, first coat on the base. Okay, the base looks great. Um, so that's it for today. Now I can just uh, let everything dry overnight. Okay, these have dried actually for a couple days now. Doesn't look too bad. There's areas that have soaked in more than others and uh, 
there's some funkiness going on here. I'm going to sand it with uh, 320, <clears throat> not too much. Let's see what it looks like. This center section uh, dried very unevenly, very strangely. I'll just sand it as much as I can. This uh, top is proving to be very difficult to sand. All those little, I guess they're like blisters, the finish didn't really dry. It's clogging up the sandpaper. I found using a block is helping. I'm also uh, using a little bit of 220 first and then the 320. And, uh, I'm just going to stand it as uh, well as I can. I don't want to cut through if I can help it. Now I'll go over it with a uh, new gray pad. Okay, I'm going to do two more things before I brush on the next coat. First, I'm going to wipe it off again with the uh, wax wash remover, just like I did before this coat. I'm going to wear uh, new gloves while I'm waiting for the wash wax removal to dry, I'm going to mix up some ammonia and water. Alright, this is a similar idea to the wax wash solvent. I'm going to wet the surface down. And I'll squeegee it off. Alright, these dry pretty quickly. While I'm waiting, I'll get my varnish ready. This finish is uh, fish iron, uh, cratering <coughs> right here as I brush it. But I'm just going to keep tipping it off. It seems to be getting better. I'm going to keep proceeding. It's actually uh, not looking too bad as I just kept tipping it off. I just, uh, and we'll see what it's like tomorrow, I just want it to get enough film on there so I can sand it smooth. This center section was by far the worst, and it's just shining like crazy right before my eyes, but as I continue to brush it, just gently tipping it off, it seems to help. So I've just uh, stood here for about five mon minutes, continually tipping it off, and it, it really looks not bad. Far from perfect, but we'll see tomorrow. Well, this is dried overnight. It's a real mess. It, uh, I did keep the heat up last night. It's dried fine, but uh, and it is better than last time. I will say that. But this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to sand it again with 220. Try to sand it level without going through. Then I'm going to wash it again with the same way I did last time. So I did it as uh, much as I could with the block. It's going well. Used a lot of expensive sandpaper. After the 220, I'm going over it by hand with 320. Seems to be helping a lot in those last little spots. Still clogs up. And then I'm going to go over it with a gray pad really well. See if I can really even out all the little bit of unevenness I can still see there. Alright, the, uh, the gray pad really evened it out. It looks good now. I know I've cut through in a couple of places, but not too many. So now I'll wash it off with the wax wash again. By the way, it took me about maybe 45 minutes to sand this and get it all ready. I still have to do the leaves, but they're not nearly as bad as this top. This top, the leaves look great. I mean, they're not perfect, but they're a lot better. Now, this is what I'm going to do differently. I'm not going to brush on a coat like I did before. I'm going to pat on a coat. This is looking okay. It's, uh, it's not great, but it's not fish-eyeing and everything. Also, I'm trying to leave a, a spare amount on. 
I think I'll have to do this uh, at least a couple more times. But at least I'm getting some finish down on here. I think it's going to work. The, uh, the leaves are sanding up uh, easier than the center section, which is nice. Uh, they're not nearly as bad. And in the areas where the finish is smooth, it actually sands up with a minimal amount of the uh, clogging sandpaper. All right, now I'll give the uh, leaves uh, the same treatment with the uh, wax wash remover as I did on the center section, and then I'll pad some finish on them. Okay, so now I'm going to pad a coat on these two leaves, and then I'll do another coat on that center section. So I put the tongue oil varnish in a little squeeze bottle to make this padding process easier. From my vantage point, looking down, it's, it looks really good. I'm trying to put on a fair amount of finish. I'm trying to put on as much finish as I can. What happens is it, it looks great as I'm looking down on it like this, which is fine. Uh, as it dries, it's drying a little streaky. Uh, I'm not too worried about it. I'm going to pat it again. I'm just trying to build up enough finish where then I can like steel wool it and wax it. As I get more and more coats built up, and if I, when I think I'm near the end of the process, I'll try to put it on a little more sparingly just to help avoid any streakiness. All right, this is the second coat for the center section. All right, wait till tomorrow and try again. Okay, this coat has dried for 24 hours. It, it looks all right. I mean, when it when it was wet, it looked great. When it dried, it you know went back a little bit. But at least, but at least it has no more of that uh, weird stuff with the contamination. So I'm just I don't need to sand it. I'm just going to pat on another coat. I've got to build up some finish. This time I'm trying to lay down a lot more of the finish. Now that I know that this padding technique seems to help keep that problem from coming back. Now I need to get enough finish on here that I can rub it out. All right, I'll keep the heat up. It's, we're in a little cool spell here and uh, see how it looks tomorrow. The tops keep looking better. Uh, these have dried for about uh, four hours and they seem really dry. I'm going to put another coat on. And this time, <clears throat> I'm going to use the satin, because I'm hoping that this is the final coat. This coat, uh, it's interesting. This is, I'm keeping this pad really, really tight, like this. And this coat seems to be going down uh, almost streak-free. It looks really good. It has a nice, uh, has a, definitely has a lower sheen. All right, I'll let this dry overnight this time and uh, see what it looks like tomorrow. All right, these uh, tops have dried overnight. They look all right, especially this one. It still has a little bit of uh, texture to it from the problem I was having. But I'm going to go over it with wax and steel wool. I think it's going to look fine. I'm just applying, uh, you know, trying to keep a flat hand, applying a, a light, even pressure. I don't want the steel wool to necessarily cut into this finish. I want it to remove any nits, and it's doing that fine. And uh, I'm hoping it'll just kind of even it out a bit. But I'm real happy with the uh, way this is waxed up. The, uh, the streakiness is gone. Uh, the coat looks beautiful. And now I'll do the leaves. Okay, I'll, uh, now. now I can assemble it.
So there we go, this uh, nice little mahogany gate leg table. Uh, if you remember, this table had a lot of problems, uh, some environmental, in other words, you remember what a mess the top was, and uh, some are inherent to the piece, and I'm speaking of the mismatched boards. In order to solve the problem of the mismatched boards, I would have had to stain it very dark mahogany, which is probably what it was originally, and that would have uh, given it a factory-like finish and eliminated all the character that it's gained over the years. Uh, we stuck to the plan, just cleaned it down, gave it an oil and wax finish. It is what it is, and I think it looks pretty good.